Got you. Thank you very much. Tom, tell us a little bit about acupuncture. I know that I've been hearing more about it as a weight loss measure. Um, I know that, and that's, it seems like it's gotten popular because of that, but talk to us about the, um, the art of acupuncture <laughs> art. and kind of, you know, <clears throat> The whole theory behind it as it relates the, to oriental the whole, medicine. <laughs> the whole theory behind it. When somebody asks me this, I normally give them the Eastern version and then the Western version. Because we're not so well versed in terms like chi or meridians or these kind of things. The Eastern version is that when our body's functioning optimally, we have this energy network. They call them meridians because of a Portuguese sailor that went over to China and translated said that, well, that kind of looks like a map. So we'll call them meridians. So this energy, or chi, flows through the body, and specifically through these meridians. When the body's healthy, that chi flow is smooth. If there's an imbalance, if there's something wrong, even before you have physical symptoms, they'll say, hmm, the chi has changed. Now, we diagnose this by doing uh, physical palpation, we ask questions, uh, there's systems where they'll actually smell people. And physical palpation. Physical palpation. Um, as I mentioned, we have 12 channels on the body. Mm -hmm. Those can be uh, looked at directly, where we'll place our hands on, apply some pressure, we'll look for things of, uh, oh, is this sensitive? Is there a depression there? Is there a hardness there? Uh, does that feel sore to you? Uh, that is one of the ways we look at it. Um, we also check the pulse. Now, this one's the tricky one, because mm -hmm. there's 12 positions that we're checking. We're not necessarily looking for a specific rate, but each one of the positions in the pulse, we have three positions and two levels on each side. So the total of 12, each one of those corresponds to one of the channels. Um, the other types of physical palpation we do, some people will do abdominal diagnosis, uh, loosely associated with the organs. Uh, the organs are all associated with different channels, and we're looking for, once again, tenderness, uh, sensitivity, differences in the texture of skin, uh, differences in temperature. And all of those will kind of give us a direction where we're going to take the treatment. Mm -hmm. uh, from a Western standpoint, because this is really kind of trying to bridge that gap of how can we comprehend what we're doing. Uh, there's, a, there's a saying in one of the classical Chinese textbooks, uh, qi and blood are intimately connected. You can't separate them. When we do a treatment, the biggest thing we see is an increase in systemic blood flow. Now, locally, uh, an acupuncture needle acts like, and sometimes the term they use in Japanese is artificial splinter. When you have a needle put in, you have a response. Your body goes, wow, there's something there that's not normally there. Uh, so how do we combat that? We increase circulation, uh, increasing uh, red blood cells, oxygen, uh, antibodies, white blood cells, protein chains, anything your body needs to repair itself mm -hmm. to that area. When it gets there, it goes, oh, this is a sterile needle. I don't need to do anything. But by the way, while I'm here, let me increase circulation to this joint to help ease some of this pain. Okay. Or let me increase uh, circulation to the intestines to kind of help with that heartburn or, or you know, ulcers or things like that. Uh, there's a, a systemic effect that happens after needles have been in about 15 minutes. Uh, your, your fight or flight, your sympathetic nervous system, which anyone that is working uh, has and is normally in, uh, pretty much takes over. Uh, your circulation decreases to the extremities. Mm -hmm. You know, you have all these side effects. Your heart rate goes up. Your lung capacity actually shrinks because the muscle's working faster. When you have those needles in for about 15 minutes, and they've done this in, in a lot of studies in China and Japan, no matter where you put those needles, you get this added bonus of switching to your parasympathetic nervous system, which is your rest and digest. Your heart rate slows down. Mm -hmm. Circulation increases. You get vasodilation to so all the blood vessels in the extremities and all the blood vessels deep in the organs get better circulation. Um, and this is, this is the cool thing, um, and this is a, a very happy side effect with acupuncture. Your brain waves actually change. Mm -hmm. Your alpha and beta brain waves, your alpha is your, your focused concentration, your beta is your mental chatter, mm -hmm. switch over to delta and theta waves which are your deep sleep and meditation. So a lot of patients leave the office a little bit groggy, some of them leave a little bit spaced out, but that's when our body actually heals itself. Okay. So that's the, the Western and the Eastern of it. Okay, what about how do you... Um, 
when we work with, with weight loss and acupuncture, uh, to, to do it correctly, it needs to be a part of an altered diet and an exercise program. Acupuncture can help digestion work more efficiently so you're getting nutrients from the food better so you don't require as much. Acupuncture can help with the psychological addictions to food. Mm -hmm. But to say that I'm going to put a needle in your body and, and speed up your metabolism and help you burn fat, that's not what acupuncture tries to do. If we talk about a pendulum of health, mm -hmm. you know, some people that have you know, a hyperactive thyroid or something like that, the pendulum may be way over here. Some people with a sluggish metabolism is gonna be over here. We can't take this side and swing it over here. Mm -hmm best we can do is kind of put it in the middle got it you know so we, we can help your body run more efficiently but to say that we're gonna make you uh, burn fat or, or drop pounds just by coming in and laying on a table and get needles I, I think that's misleading got it thank you Dr. RJ my older brother to make sure he gets checked but as far as acupuncture have you had any incidents where you might have placed the needle at a wrong spot and might be some side effects, and I'll go check my insurance to see if it's going to be some. You know, one, one of the things with, with, with acupuncture, we're dealing with needles that are, you know, the size of three strands of hair. They're much smaller than an injection needle. They're designed a little bit differently. Uh, acupuncture points sometimes do fall very close to nerves. Uh, but the sensation that you'd get if you go into a nerve would be extreme pain, uh, and it would go away in a minute or two. We take the needle out. Um, other than that, there hasn't been many uh, acupuncture related accidents. Uh, any ones that I've heard of have been either because of a student or somebody attempting acupuncture that wasn't properly licensed. Um, side effects, the most common thing you'll get because everyone has capillaries under the surface of their skin is a small bruise. It's normally about the size of a dime. It lasts for a few days. It's, it's much less uh, it's not as nasty as, as some of the bruises you get when you give blood. You'll see people that have their whole elbow black and blue. It's, it's normally, you know, dime size goes away in a few days. That tends to be it. But, okay. you know, I think it, the point... Do you, do you treat people to help them stop smoking? And if so, what is the what success, success rate? rate? Um, <laughs> I get this one a lot. Yes. There was a, a protocol designed specifically for, for heroin addiction that they found effective in almost any kind of addiction. Uh, and they've even shown studies, even gambling and things like that. Um, I screen my smoking patients because more often than not, I get somebody coming in saying, my wife wants me to be here, my husband wants me to be here, or you know, my insurance premium's gonna go up if I don't quit smoking. You know, and, and they don't wanna do it for themselves. If they're genuinely there, hey, I know this is bad for me, for me. it's time to quit. I can say about 70% of them can quit with, with the use of acupuncture. Uh, it's actually needles in the ear, a couple of points in the, in, uh, the wrists and elbow, and uh, it's, it's one of the few treatments I book as kind of a package thing because I want patients to be committed to at least four treatments. Some of them take a few more. I've had patients quit after one or two. Um, but normally within four weeks' time, patients can, yeah, patients can cut down or, or completely quit smoking. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I want to take this opportunity to thank both Dr. Siegel and Tom and Ginyo. They've been um, very great <laughs> interviews today. <laughs> Tom, do you want to give your website? Uh, it's ancientartsacupuncture.com. Uh, if you if you Google acupuncture in Baltimore, my name will come up on the map first. So good, Dr. Siegel. You want to give your everybody knows how to find you, but I well, think I'll it should you, be a website. I left a shirt for everybody for the Great Prostate Cancer Challenge. We had a lot of shirts, so it's all on there, uh, and they're all extra larges. So if you want to sleep in them, they're great. Okay. Um, and thank you very much, uh, Karen, for having us. Uh, I always enjoy coming down here and being part of this series. Thank you so much, and the mayor thanks you as this well. Is great. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much.